Get ready to find the keys to living the life you always wanted to live. Reverend Steve James will share powerful keys to living the life that Jesus Christ came to make available. Take your Bibles, if you'd like, and go to Genesis chapter 24. Genesis 24. And this is going to be the, the final episode of the journeys of Abraham. But I'm calling this teaching the prosperous journey. The prosperous journey. And uh, it reminds me very much of 3 John chapter 2, which you guys don't have to go to. But if you are familiar with 3 John 2, it says, I be Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health, even as thy soul prospers. Pretty cool, huh? I memorized that. But that's ex that's what it says, you know. And a lot of times when you point that verse out to people, they'll go, well, that doesn't always mean money. They'll, they'll almost always tell you that. And I go, you're right, it doesn't. It doesn't always mean money. But I, but I know God's Word enough to know that God wants us to be prosperous and to be healthy. He wants us to have what we need to do whatever it is that we need to do. In today's society, you know, we need money to get to get things to, to help us along with our lives. You know, things are a lot better with money. You know what I mean? You're able to buy what you need. But the same thing was true in the lands and times of the Bible. They needed money. They lived in an agricultural society where they still needed that type of thing to live prosperously. But this record here in uh, Genesis chapter 24 is the first four uses of that word prosperous. Oh, the whole Bible? Yeah. Wow. The first one's in here, and the second one, and the third one, and the fourth one are all in this chapter. And we'll and you'll see here quite plainly that this isn't really talking about money. But let's see what the lessons here are for us, okay, as we read it. And in verse 1 of chapter 24, it says, And Abraham was old and well stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. That's a little prosperity there. See, the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said unto his old eldest servant of his house, that ruled over all that he had, Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh, and I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. But thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac. And the servant said unto him, Peradventure the woman will not be willing to follow me unto this land. Must I needs bring thy son again unto the land from hence thou camest? And Abraham said unto him, Beware that thou beware thou that thou bring not my son hither again. The Lord God of heaven, which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, and which spake unto me, and that sweared unto me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land, he shall send his angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from hence. And I just want to stop here for a second and just think about what he said here. He says, you go to my kindred's house, and that's where you find a wife for my son Isaac. And, and he says, and you know what? Going along with you will be an angel. Will be an angel. Now, today in our lives... Uh, we have something much better than an angel. We have Christ within us. We have Holy Spirit. But this angel was there with him to help him out in these situations. And as I've read the Bible and I've looked at, at angels, I see that angels have helped a lot of people who didn't have Holy Spirit, like Joseph and uh, Mary and others. You know, you can read about it. Matter of fact, we read them earlier in, about Abraham, how the angel came and talked to him and to Lot and so forth. 
But I've also seen angels work with born-again ones, like Paul and Peter. Peter, the angel, helped him get out of prison. And Paul, when he was on the boat, the angel came and talked to him. But we have something much better than an angel with us. We have Holy Spirit. We have a direct connection with God. And God can give us information. God can teach us things directly. It is God that works within us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. That's what we have. This servant didn't have that. But he did have the angel to work with him. So I just wanted to put that out there. The angels working with him. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, verse 8, it says, And if the woman will not be willing to follow thee, then thou shall be clear from this my oath. Only bring not my son hither again. And the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham his master and sware to him concern in that manner. And the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master and departed. For all the goods of his master were in his hand. And he arose and he went to Mesopotamia unto the city of Nahor. Now, you can see that, well, we all know that Abraham was prosperous. I mean, he, God blessed him. and But this servant had charge of all his stuff. He was like the CEO of Abraham Incorporated. <laughs> you know, the business he had. So he went and he took ten camels and departed with some stuff for the trip. Verse 11, And he made his camels to kneel down without the city, without the city, by the well of the water at the time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. And he said, Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day, and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, Let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall say, Drink, and I will give thee thy camel's drink also. Let the same be she that shall that thou has appointed for my servant Isaac, and thereby shall I know that thou hast shown kindness unto my master. So he's praying to God, and as he's praying, he, he's asking God for us. Well, he's telling God the sign that he wants to see. The sign is when the woman comes up, he's going to ask for a drink of water. And remember, in the lands and times of the Bible, that was one of the things you could ask a woman was for water. But if she goes, hey, here's some water, and I'll also take care of your camels too, that will be the one. You know, so there it's happening, right? And we know that there's an angel working along with us. As we read the record, you'll never see the angel do something. But we know that there's an angel working behind the scenes. Okay. Verse 15. And it came to pass before he had done speaking that, behold, Rebekah came out, who was born of Bethuel, the son of Milchel, the wife of uh, Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. And the damsel was very fair to look upon, a virgin. Neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well to fill her pitcher and came up. Well, it says here that she was a damsel and very fair to look upon. It reminds me a little bit about Sarah. There must have been awfully pretty girls in that, from that family. You know, so she was there and... And she's coming up and she has the picture. In verse 17, And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. And she said, Drink, my lord. 
And she hastened, and she let down her pitcher upon her hand, and gave him to drink. And when she had done given him drink, she said, I will draw water, water for thy camels also, until they have done drinking. And she hastened, and she emptied her pitcher into the trough, and ran again unto the well to draw water, and drew for all his camels. She, uh, when I look at Rebecca in this record, she was she was uh, willing to serve. Would you say she was willing to work hard to bless people? Because I'm sure to get a pitcher of water to, fit, to feed ten camels took a little work. You know, I, I know that camels drink a lot. I've never seen a camel drink, but I just, you know, I know that camels drink a lot. I know if you had ten horses and you had to uh, drink, uh, get water all ten horses, that would take some time. Maybe 20 minutes, maybe 40 minutes, right? Keep drawing the water out of the well, you know. I knew guys that had a, a farm, right, dairy farms, and what they would do is just turn the water on to the trough, but those cows drank a lot of water. So this, she, she's putting herself in a position to work very hard. I would say that she was a good worker. Is all, the only point I'm trying to make. She was a good worker to bless and to help people. So she made sure all those camels had water. And then verse 21. And the man wondered at her, held his peace to wit, whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. That's the first usage right there. The first usage of that word prosperous is right here. And whenever you, the first usage in the Bible of a word tells you, gives you a real good understanding of what that word means. For him to be prosperous wasn't all his money per se, but it was that he would get a wife for Isaac. And the angel working with him he comes up and says, I'm going to ask for water, and if she wants to water the camels, let that be the one. So he's, that's what he said, and he's wondering if this is going to be the one. Is, is, you know, is this going to be the one that the Lord has made his journey prosperous or not? Verse 22, And it came to pass, as the camels had done drinking, that the man took the golden earring of a half a shekel weight and two bracelets for a hand of ten shekels weight of gold and said whose daughter art thou tell me I pray thee is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge in and she said unto him I am the daughter of Bethuel the son of Michal Michal no L there Michal uh, which she bare unto uh, Nahor, and she said, Moreover unto him, We have both straw and provender enough and a room to lodge in. Now earlier in these sessions we looked at, in the lands and times of the Bible, people who were spiritual looked for ways to bless people, to lodge them, to take care of them. And she goes, Hey, we have room for you and your ten camels. We have straw and provender, must mean, yeah, provender, which must mean really good stuff. And and she says we have it. And the man bowed down his head and he worshipped the Lord. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and of his truth. And I being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. See, what he sees here, he's, well, for number one, he's giving God the glory. He says, oh, bless God, the glory, you know. And he's saying, but God has led me. Well, we know that there was an angel that helped this to come to pass. But thinking about us, who have Holy Spirit, right? It's God that works within us to will and to do of his good pleasure. God wants us to be prosperous also in the endeavors of our lives. But he's going, man, God has blessed us. And he, and he brought me right here to this place. Well, hasn't God done that for us? And won't he continue to do that for us? Well, the answer is yes, he will. 
And we have something much greater than an angel. We have Christ within us. And it's God that works within us, both the will and the do of his good pleasure. Prosperity is part of our lives, too. Hmm. Verse 28. And the damsel ran and told them of her mother's house these things. And Rebekah had a brother, and his name was Laban. And Laban ran out unto the man unto the well. And it came to pass, when he saw the earrings and the bracelets upon his sister's hand, and when he heard the words of Rebekah, his sister, sister, saying, Thus spake the man unto me, that he came unto the man, and behold, he stood by the camels at the well. And he said, Come in, thou blessed of the Lord, therefore... Wherefore standest thou without? For I have prepared the house, and the room for the camels. And the man came in unto the house, and he ungirded his camels, and he gave straw and provender for the camels, and water to wash his feet, and the men's feet that were with him. He, he didn't come alone, he came with a, some a workforce, other servants. But they washed his feet. Not like... Simon did for Jesus Christ because he didn't even wash Jesus Christ's feet. Remember that in the Gospels? Didn't even wash his feet. Matter of fact, to not wash Jesus Christ's feet was an insult to Jesus Christ. And the woman came in with and washed Jesus Christ's feet with her tears and wiped his feet with her hair. And the guy goes, she, he was really a prophet. He would have known that woman was a sinner. And Jesus said, hey, you know what? I came into your house. You didn't kiss me. You didn't wash my feet. And this woman hasn't stopped kissing me. And she washed her feet with her tears. A lot better person than you are. Yeah, basically. <laughs> you know. But see, they, they took care of them and they washed their feet. Verse 33. And there was set meat before him to eat. But he said, I will not eat until I have told mine errand. And he said, Speak on. And he said, I am Abram's servant. And the Lord hath blessed my master greatly. And he is become great. And he has given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and men servants and maid servants and camels and asses. And Sarah, my master's wife, bare him a, bare a son to my master when she was old, and unto him hath he given all that he hath. And my master made me swear, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife to my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I dwell, but thou shalt go into my father's house and to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son. And I said unto my master, Peraventure the woman will not follow me. And he said unto me, The Lord before whom I walk will send his angel with thee, and what? Prosper thy way. And the Lord shall take a wife for my son of my kindred and of my father's house. Then shalt thou be clear from this my oath, when thou comest to my kindred, and if they give not thee one, thou shalt be clear from my, my oath. And I came this day to the well, and said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, if now thou do prosper my way, which I go, stand, behold, I stand by the well of the water, and it shall come to pass that when the virgin comes forth to draw water and I say to her give me I pray thee a little water of my pitcher to drink and she say to me both drink thou and I will also draw for thy camels let the same be the woman whom the Lord has anointed out for my master's son <sighs> isn't that great we can listen to God too you know that we can listen to God. We can we have Christ within us. We we got something so much better than an angel. We have word of knowledge, word of wisdom. God can make our ways prosperous in the things that we want to do in our lives. 
See, that's the lesson that's really here for us, is that we can, we can pray, ask God to help us, and God will show us, okay, little signs, little things that we can see to know that it's God working within us. We have grace upon grace, or we have favor. God has favored us. But see what the servant, he keeps going. And I said, God, this is what I want to see. And he keeps bringing it up. And God shows him. And God shows him. And God shows him. And he says, and, if, and, and this is what God did. And if this is what God's want to happen, this is what's going to happen. And she did this. She gave me to drink and she gave the camels to drink too. It looks like God's working. That's what he kept saying. It looks like God's working to me. Just like God's working to me. Yeah. So where am I? Forty five? Yeah. And but be, and before I had done speaking in my heart, he didn't even say it out loud. Behold, Rebecca came forth with her pitcher on her shoulder, and she said went down unto the well and, and drew water, and I said unto her, Give me the drink, I pray thee. And she made haste and let down her pitcher from her shoulder and said, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. So I drank, and she made the camels drink also. And I asked her, Whose daughter art thou? And you know what? She was exactly from the family that Abraham asked her to go to. Pretty wild, huh? I asked her whose daughter thou art, and she said, Well, I told I am the daughter of Bethu, Nahor's son, whom Michal bare unto him, and I put the earrings upon her face and the bracelets upon her hands. And I bowed down my head, and I worshiped the Lord, and blessed the Lord God of my master Abraham, which led me in the right way, to take my master's brother's daughter unto his son. Reminds me of that song, you know, uh, The Lord knows the way through the wilderness, you know. He just saying, God, if this is what we got to do, this is what Abraham wanted me to do. And you know what? It says here four times, prosperous. Prosperous. God makes us prosperous. It says in Third John 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health. That's what God wants for us. Verse 48, And I bowed down my head and I worshiped the Lord and blessed the Lord God of my master Abraham, which had led me in the right way to take my master's... my to take my master's brother's daughter unto his son. And now, if ye, if ye will deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me. And if not, tell me, that I may turn to the right hand or to the left. Then Laban and uh, Bethuel answered and said, The thing proceedeth from the Lord. We cannot speak to thee bad or good. Behold, Rebekah... Rebecca is before thee. Take her and go. And 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 okay, take her and go and let her by be thy master's son's wife, as the Lord has spoken. And one thing you can see there, they saw that God was working in this thing, and they said, "Hey, can we fight against God?" No, there she is. And it came to pass that when Abraham's servant heard these words. He worshipped the Lord, bowing himself to the earth. And the servant brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment, and she and gave them to Rebekah. He gave also to her brother and to her mother precious things, nice things. So they, they were getting a little prosperity in their lives too, precious gifts. Verse 44, And they did eat and drink, he and the men that were with him, and they tarried all night, and they arose up in the morning and said, Send me away unto my master. And the brother and the mother said, Let the damsel abide with us a few days, at the least ten days, 
after that she may go. See, at night they said, we can't fight against God, let her go. In the morning they were thinking, well, let her hang out for ten days. At least ten days. You know, let her hang out for ten days. Look at verse 56. And he said, so they had, they changed their mind a little bit. Not a lot, but, you know, they, a little bit. And he said unto them, Hinder me not, seeing that the Lord hath what? Prospered my way. Send me away that I may go to my master. See, the Lord's prospering their way. And he's, and he's bringing it back to them. The Lord's prospering away. Let me continue to prosper. And they said, We will call the damsel and require her mouth. And they called Rebecca, and they said to her, Wilt thou go with this man? And she said, I will go. And they sent her away. They sent away Rebekah, their sister, and her nurse, and Abraham's servant, and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said to her, Thou art our sister. Be thou the mother of thousands of millions, and let thy seed uh, possess the gates of those which hate them. And Rebekah arose, and her damsel, and they rode upon the camels and followed the men. And the servant servants took Rebekah and went his way. And Isaac came from the, well, uh, from the way of the well of La Hadaroni, for he dwelled in the south country. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the evening time. And, I, well, i got to stop there and just think. Isaac was a spiritual man, too. And Isaac went out and he meditated. And it reminds me of verses that say, Meditate upon the Lord day and night. As you meditate upon God, you'll be like the tree that's planted by the rivers of water. Spiritual men, spiritual men and women, meditate and think about God. He's just meditating because he's a spiritual man, thinking about God and the things of God. And that's what he, in the field at the evening time, and he lifted up his eyes and he saw, and behold, the camels were coming. And Rebecca lifted up, lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel, for she said unto the servant, What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all things that he had done. He goes, Wow, it's a pretty good day. I'm out here meditating and I get a wife. <laughs> and uh, verse 47, And Isaac brought her unto his mother's Sarah's tent, and took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. And I want to read the next verse. Then again, Abram took a wife, and her name was oh, Keturah. And what happens after this, Abraham uh, g takes a wife, and if you, if you just look at all these names, he has a bunch more kids. Yeah. A ton more kids. You know? <laughs> and look at verse... Five. We'll continue in five. And Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac. But unto the sons of the concubines which Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts and sent them away from Isaac his son, while he yet lived eastward unto the east country. And these are the days of the years of Abraham's life which he lived a hundred three score in fifteen years how, how old was he a hundred and seventy five years old and after he's an old man he has a bunch more kids in verse 8 then Abram gave up the ghost and he died in a good old age an old man and full of years and was gathered unto his people and his son Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of oh, Mappala 
in the field of Ephron, the son of Zippor the Hittite, which was which is before Mara. Well, and so what we see here is Isaac and Ishmael. Ishmael hasn't been on the scene. There's no record of him for years. For like, I mean, I'm, we're talking 50 years. He hasn't been around. So he's 75 years old. It's not it's not old. Well, I'm going to tell you. We're going to read it in just one second. Look at verse 19. Then it says, And these are the generations of Isaac, er, uh, Abraham's son. Abraham begot Isaac. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife. It doesn't say how old Isaac was when he took Rebekah. I mean, how old... Abraham was when he took her to wife. No. How old was Abraham when he had... He was 140 years old, or 141 years old when um, when uh, he took him as a wife, because he was born when Abraham was... Well, he was conceived when he was 100, or maybe 101, because nine months is nine months. You know what I mean? In other words, if you're... Four months, your four okay, months into your sense. four months into your birthday, then it would be a hundred and one. Yeah, you know so what I mean? Isaac would have been seventy something when. So you, you picture, I'm, you picture, you're reading. I'm picturing a little kid bearing his father. Yeah. Okay. He's, he's an old man. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 He's a hundred and seventy-five, and. Yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty wild. Yeah, so Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of, you know, Bethu, the Syrian of uh, Pentheorum, the, the sister of Laban. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, uh, his wife, conceived. And then goes the record of uh well, yeah, I, you know, of her children, which is two children, which is Jacob and Esau. Jacob became Israel, and that's where the twelve tribes of Israel came Joshua. from. Joshua came. Joseph. Joseph. Yeah, that's okay. I do that all the time. I even when I know, uh, even when I think no, I'm saying the right one, yeah. <laughs> but so. And that's the end of our, our teaching about Abraham, but it's a good one. He's a, he's a good guy, wasn't he? Yeah, I didn't know where Jacob came from. Yeah, it was Isaac's that's son. Cool. Yeah, yeah that's it really is. Cool. Yeah, it is. It's really cool. And uh, you know, look how far we're into the Bible. Hardly nothing. Hardly nothing. It's so amazing. Every, uh, so <laughs> many things, the quantity of things that happened in Genesis. Yeah. Oh, I always yeah, all the way to Joseph, really. Well, all the way to. Revelations? Well, no, I'm just talking about Genesis. All the way to Joseph and a little bit beyond. Oh. You know, and then Exodus is basically when Moses comes along. That's right. The next book. Yeah, Noah's Ark. I always used to think that had to be in, like, halfway through. Halfway through. <laughs> yeah, and then someone's like, from Genesis, and I'm like, what? <laughs> no way. Yeah, right near the beginning. And then I thought that was the only thing in Genesis. Oh, it's all about the Ark. It's like, <laughs> that's a big story. That must be the whole book. <laughs> well, those guys lived a while, huh? Well, Abraham lived a while, 175 years. Yeah, and he was prosperous. And then listen, and so he's a hundred, he's 140 or 41 years old, and then he has a bunch of kids. You know. The episode is complete. So head over to stevejanes.com. While there, sign up for our newsletter. If you're interested in learning how to read the Bible, there's also an audio class and companion books available on How to Read the Bible for Understanding and Power. The website has audio teachings and biblical studies books all there to help you grow in God's grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Listen next week for another reading of God's wonderful, matchless word.